not all stereotypes are created equal. In fact, psychological scientists have developed a model that describes the content of stereotypes toward different social groups. This model is known as the Stereotype Content Model, commonly abbreviated SCM, and it proposes that the content of stereotypes associated with different social groups varies along two dimensions, competence and warmth. Let's explore those dimensions as well as some of the predictions that stem from the model. So as I said, the first dimension along which the content of stereotypes varies is competence. That is, some groups are stereotyped as being highly competent, whereas others are viewed as relatively incompetent. The second dimension along which the content of stereotypes varies is warmth. That is, some groups are stereotyped as being very warm, very friendly and trustworthy, whereas others are perceived as being relatively cold, relatively unfriendly or untrustworthy. So we can combine these two dimensions to form four groups, which we'll label according to where they fall on the stereotype dimensions of competence and warmth. So the first group, for example, is LCHW, as you can see here, low competence, high warmth. I'll note that these groups are sometimes referred to as clusters and are simply numbered off, like cluster one, cluster two, and so on. You'll see why they're called clusters in a moment, but just to foreshadow, it literally refers to cluster analysis, which is an analysis, a statistical operation, used to form these groups based on empirical data. That doesn't matter too much for our purposes, but in any case, numbering off is a more arbitrary labeling system in my opinion, so I and many other people refer to the clusters like this instead. Okay, so the second group is HCHW. So this is a group associated with high levels of competence and high levels of warmth. Next we have LCLW, low competence, low warmth, sort of getting the worst of both ends here. And finally, HCLW, high competence and low warmth. Now when we say competence and warmth, what traits do we really mean? What social perceptions are we actually talking about? To answer this question, we can look to data from an older study that quantified the structure of personality impressions along dimensions similar to these. So intelligence, which is very similar to competence, and social, which is very similar to warmth. As you can see on their two axes here, they used good and bad instead of high and low, but we're getting at the same idea. If you'd like, you can pause the video to explore the full range of qualities that characterize these broader traits, but I'll move on for now. I just think it's nice to have the full spectrum, the full range of what we're really talking about in your heads as we move on, if you'd like. Okay, so now let's take a look at these groups or clusters visually. I'll note that the stereotype content model is not specific to race, as you'll see in just a second. And I'll note also that we're going to revisit this model in the future to explore the content of stereotypes for many different social groups beyond race, so stay tuned for that. All right, so our first group here is HCHW, the high competence, high warmth. So you can see these two axes here, the competence x-axis and the warmth y-axis. So at the far left of the x-axis is low competence. At the far right of the x-axis is high competence. So you can see that this cluster, this group, is sort of at the higher end of competence. That's where they get that HC in their name. Then we have the warmth y-axis with lower, right, down, uh, lower scores being low warmth, and then up, high scores being high warmth. And you can see also that relative to the y-axis, this group, this cluster is pretty high up. So HW, high warmth. So here, uh, certain groups like white people, middle class uh, people, students who are getting an education, for example, are high in competence and high in warmth, at least in terms of what other people think. As I talk about this, I'll say that this group and that group is low warmth or low competence or high warmth. That doesn't mean they actually are, right? We're talking about stereotypes. This is just what people believe. Whether or not it's actually accurate is a whole nother story. All right, next we have the HCLW group, so high in competence, really high in competence. Look how far to the right on the x-axis this cluster is, uh, but uh, relatively low warmth. And again, there is some variability, but here we have rich people, men, uh, professionals, Asians, uh, for example. Next we have a group I haven't really talked about. This is MCMW. Based on where that cluster is, guess what the M stands for? 
Well, you might guess middle or moderate, and both of those ideas would be pretty accurate. I'm gonna call it moderate. So moderate competence, moderate warmth, it's smack dab in the middle of our graph, right? Right in the middle of the x-axis, axis, excuse me, and the middle of the y-axis as well. So moderate competence, moderate warmth. For example, blue collar workers, Native Americans, Hispanics, young people, and so on. Next, we have the low competence, high warmth group. So look at how far to the left this is on the x-axis. Uh, so we have elderly people and, and disabled people. And I'll note that competence here is a very general word. So it could refer to physical incompetence or sort of mental incompetence. Uh, again, in, at least in terms of people's stereotypes. But look how high this group is on that warmth dimension relative to the y-axis, very high. And finally, we have the LCLW group. Uh, for example, people who are poor, homeless people, welfare recipients. So you can see a similar theme here. This is mainly um, people from the United States making these ratings. So um, you can take that for what it is. Uh, very low in competence and very uh, low in warmth ratings as well. Now it turns out that different clusters tend to evoke different kinds of emotions and of course different forms of prejudice since prejudice involves emotion as we've learned in previous videos. Let's go through these different forms of emotions and prejudice for each group. Now I'll start with the HCHW group, high competence, high warmth. They aren't really prejudiced against very much, right? Um, at least in terms of the emotions, they're usually uh, viewed with admiration, okay? Uh, now you do see prejudice, for example, sometimes toward women, but it's a little bit of a paradox because women are generally viewed very, very positively, but at the same time, sometimes aren't always um, awarded the same opportunities. So you do see sexism at the same time. And that's a very specific, weird form of paradox that we're gonna talk about in a future video. But for the most part, positive emotions are associated with this group. For the high competence, low warmth group, we have envious prejudice. And we call it envious prejudice because this group is typically associated with emotions such as envy or jealousy for people who are professionals, who are educated, who are rich, but not viewed, viewed as uh, very warm. For the moderate group, it's kind of moderate as well. It's mixed, I think is a good way. Another M word that we can use to understand this. So you do see sometimes uh, stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination towards some of these groups, but other times uh, less so, and it really just depends. Uh, I think the thing here is that it's inconsistent. For this low competence, high warmth group, we have paternalistic prejudice. Paternalistic meaning fatherly, viewing yourself sort of as a father figure to them, which is really weird to think about, but it's kind of appropriate because it's associated with emotions such as pity and sympathy, feeling bad for uh, these people, which is sort of, you're the superior and they're the inferior. You're the paternal figure, the father, they're the child, right? Which is terrible to think about, but uh, again, kind of accurate in terms of how people treat them. And finally, contemptuous prejudice, meaning we view these uh, groups here with contempt, right? With anger and resentment, and those are the emotions uh, associated with that. So the low competence, low warmth group typically is met with contem uh, contemptuous prejudice. And here's the final model just overall described neatly in one little table other than the moderate group here, uh, along with the emotions that each cluster tends to evoke. Now I'll note that this table largely reflects the same information as what we just saw, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but I want to provide the information to you in this way as well so you can sort of conceptualize the model both ways.